I'm here at the NRA National Farms Museum with senior curator of the museum, Phil Schreier, who's taken us back here into the Roosevelt Room, Phil, for this great opening of a wonderful exhibit, Theodore Roosevelt, Trappings of an Icon, here a limited time here at the National Farms Museum on special loan from folks in Sagamore Hill. So tell us a little bit about how this came about and then what we're gonna to see today, Phil. Well, John, we're very fortunate to have a great relationship with the National Park Service, and in particular, Sagamore Hill National Historic Site at Oyster Bay, New York. Uh, they're closing the house for uh, three to four years so that it uh, can be renovated, brought up to standards uh, for climate control, so that the actual uh, artifacts, uh, possessions of uh, Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president, uh, can survive for another dozen generations. Uh, so while the house is closed, uh, their chief of, Curat of uh, cultural resources, mm -hmm. Amy Verone, asked us if uh, we would like to display some of the president's artifacts, and we were only too happy to do so. Temporary housing for these wonderful treasures. And what a better place than right here. Well, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't think of a better place. And uh, in this case, we're very fortunate. Uh, you know, the, uh, even though Sagamore Hill is closed, the main visitor center, the main museum uh, that had a lot of the items uh, up close to the glass was called Old Orchard. And that was General Theodore Roosevelt's home. He too, like his father, earned the Medal of Honor on D-Day uh, in World War II. Um, and uh, General Roosevelt's uh, house serves as a, as a big museum. And there's a lot of, of great stuff there. But uh, uh, that's still open to the public. Right. But w when I was looking for, uh, you know, the, the colonel's revolver that he used and some of those things, his spurs and his binoc, all those are still on display at Old Orchard. But only I could only borrow the things that were at the house. Right. Well, one of the Brooks Brothers' tunics was at the house. If you look right inside the uh, the breast flap pocket, you'll see Brooks Brothers Broadway. T. Roosevelt in fountaining on the inside label of the tab well, there. So when you're going to storm San Juan Hill, you want to have Brooks Brothers only. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> His uh, hat, of course, is a Stetson, and it was retailed by uh, Franks in uh, San Antonio. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, Frank Brothers was still in business just uh, until the last 15 years or so. Uh, they were still in business. He. Uh, carried perhaps one of the rarest of all U.S. military swords that I've ever seen, and that is a, uh, a shark skin wrapped 1872 cavalry saver for an officer. Normally, uh, cavalry and artillery and infantry are wrapped in leather. Only Navy swords are generally wrapped in shark skin. Theodore was Assistant Secretary of the Navy at one point. He may have had a premonition he knew what was coming and had had these guys make this special form before the actual declaration of war. Wow. But uh, acid etched into the blade is uh, the inscription carried by Colonel Roosevelt, uh, San Juan Hill, Cuba, July 1, 1898. Wow. And, and, and such an iconic figure, such history around Roosevelt, classic images. And one of those things you think about when you think about Theodore Roosevelt is, is that image and the, the hat, the, the, the Stetson, the tunic going up there. I mean, so many people recognize that as, as classically Roosevelt. Absolutely. And here it is, the real, that's impressive, Phil. We, we saw it, uh, we got to see it upstairs in the Zika room and, and it, looks, it looks so nice down here and presented so well. You guys have really done a wonderful job putting this all together. And the great news, it's continuing to roll out and it's gonna be here available for, if people wanna come and see us, they can stand where we are, Phil. That's right. And see this right here. How do they do that? They can do that by, uh, by taking exit 57A off of Interstate 66 in Fairfax, Virginia. We're open seven days a week from 9.30 until five o'clock. There's plenty of free parking. There's free admission. There's cafeterias open from 11.30 to 2, Monday through Friday, if you get here for lunch. And the chow is good. Thursday steak day. <laughs> uh, if you can't make it on, off the interstate, hit us on the internet, and that's nramuseum.com. And so this will stay up for? We're uh, hoping. Open-ended a little right well, now? Well, we're hoping three to four years, John. You're going to keep uh, it as long as you can. Yeah, I mean, I, not wanting to wish ill on the uh, park service, but if budget gets stretched mm. and maybe everything doesn't get done real fast. Uh, who knows, it might be here a little longer, but right. uh, 
No, uh, in all seriousness, we're so fortunate and blessed to That's great. be able to show this for the public. It's a great thing to have the Park Service trust a private institution uh, with these treasures of a national icon. It's a private institution, but it's the NRA. So. It's our NRA. That's right. Very good. So, well, thank you, Phil, for, for your, your, your great care and getting us all together. And thank you for taking time to show us. We're truly honored here at the Curator's Corner. Thank you, sir, for another wonderful segment of the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.